All right, uh, one of the things I did want to show you is, despite the fact that uh, there's some kind of a limitation of uh, modeling functionality here, you still have the full assemblies capability. You've got an assemblies drop down and an uh, uh, assemblies ribbon bar up here that gives you a bunch of the commands, in fact, all the commands that are in the normal packages. Uh, there is a menu drop down that you can get into specific uh, menu format access to your various functionalities. And in assemblies, you can see there's all kinds of options within the, uh, the context of your environment of the part file you're working in or the assembly structure, product structure you might be working in. You can add components, create new components, move them around, uh, mirror parts in an assembly so you only have to create half of them. Uh, all kinds of functionality there. Arrangements allows you to create different configurations of an assembly. The same exact components, but maybe in different positions, different orientations, whatever. Exploded views, all that functionality is there. Uh, so you're not getting uh, uh, shorted at all on assembly's functionality. It's, it's the full package from what I'm seeing. I'll go to this home tab in the ribbon bar. And just to show you, we're going to kind of focus on uh, two of what they call the groups in the ribbon bar here, the geometry group and the synchronous modeling group. And I'm just going to pop open this little drop down here for the, uh, the kind of geometries that you could create, such as points and curves and uh, datum planes or datum coordinate systems. And then two actual solid features, a block and a cylinder. And then you can actually create notes. And those can also be used for engraving or embossing or whatever. The next drop down has a bunch of different options here that you can modify geometry. Some of them are a face or sheet body relative, such as sewing, things like that. And this is where I'm, I'm going to be using a few of these commands in addition to uh, what was in the uh, previous drop down here. Then we go over to the synchronous, and you've got uh, a move phase, an offset region, replace and delete phase, in addition to what they call a gallery of a bunch of other commands. And we'll be using several of those here at this point. All right, I'm going to create a cylinder here. And just to show you how that works, it's very, very simple. It's a cylindrical definition, a, a predefined feature. And by default, it's already inferred to create it at the 0, 0, 0 location with the axis running up the z-axis. So all I have to do is just type the size I might want. So if I want a diameter of 2 and a height of 6, I could just say OK. And that would create a uh, kind of a shaft-shaped part. Or I could just type in a new number and make it a 6-inch diameter and a 2-inch height, and more like a hockey puck. And we'll just do that real quickly here. Mouse button 2, and there's my cylinder. It's parametric. If I double click on that, or I could do a right mouse click and, and whatever, I can now change that to be the 2 inch diameter, 6 inch tall. Now, as I create these solids, that's the basis of where you want to start working with your model geometry, not only in the CAM Express uh, package, but also in, in any of the other mock packages or whatever. Uh, NX tends to be a, a tree like feature history approach as opposed to a bushy, standalone, coordinate system-based uh, feature tree. You have full capabilities of uh, undo in the sense that uh, if I press my right mouse button, mouse button 3, at the bottom there's an undo command. And then you also have, under the menu, you've got the ability to go to edit undo list, and it will show you each individual undoable step. And that's also made a lot easier up in what they call a quick access toolbar. There's a little undo drop down here that immediately shows you all the steps. So if I just wanted to undo that edit to the shape and size of that cylinder, then I could just pick the edit feature parameters. Or if I just want to get rid of the cylinder completely, I can undo both of those steps in one. If I now want to create a block, just drop down, choose the block function. Same way is that it is ready to create a block with its corner at 0, 0, 0. And the dimensions, it's in overstrike mode. If I wanted to change the size, I could just start typing. I don't have to click in the box or whatever. Again, very, very ergonomic and, and very effective, very efficient. Uh, I'll go with a, six, uh, a 12 by 6 by 2 block and just say OK. Green or true trimetric orientation, uh, which also <coughs> fits the screen. All right, now, as we get into uh, having existing geometry now, um, you have in this part navigator as well, again, very efficient, a right mouse click pops up commands. You can edit the parameters, get display dimensions. So now I can see the actual the expression names. All right, to uh, start doing some modifications and adding shape onto here, um, if I want to leave those dimensions there, then I can just 
go ahead and, and create some more uh, shape definition. Or if I want to get rid of those dimensions, just a right mouse click, refresh, and they go away. When I go to the More Gallery and drop that down, there are some commands that they added into the NX9 release here, allowing you to not just edit and, and work with faces, but also now work with edges. And I'll just show you one or two of these commands. Move Edge. Obviously, it allows you to select an edge. And when you pick commands, most of the time, uh, any of the commands are going to bring up a dialog. And the dialogs are very consistent. If you need to pick anything, that's always the first step at the top. Then any of the parameters or the input that you might need to do is going to be the next portion of the dialog. Then any kind of enhancements to that will be down below that. Finally, at the bottom, there will be some settings or a preview uh, control. And uh, you normally leave that on so you can just collapse that, keep your dialog shorter, uh, and not have to, to move it around a lot. Now, as I want to do a, a command here of move edge, obviously, I just pick an edge. And as soon as I pick that edge, it will then give me, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of feedback on the screen for a distance value. And uh, as I'm picking that, then I can identify what vector I want it to move in. If I want it to move in a particular vector direction, I can choose that from the drop down here. I can infer a direction by some pick, such as another edge. And then I can drag that back, or I could type in a number. And I like dragging it, so I'm just going to drag that edge back. Get it right to about two inches there. Release. Choose the middle mouse button again and say OK. And I just created a bevel on there by moving the edge. Now, by saying OK, that closes the window. In case I want to do more of those options or more of those commands, I could say Apply instead. And that would leave the dialog window up. So for instance, if I pick another edge here, <coughs> excuse me. Um, now I can move that edge. I don't want to move it uh, along the top face there. I want to move it directly up. So I'll just choose a different direction. I'll choose a Z option instead. And as I drag that up, then you can see the kind of editing of the adjacent or neighboring faces that happens there. And you have some control, some options. Uh, there is a morph option here. That, as you can see, the edge that I selected is, is remaining the exact same length. And if I pick a little bit different option here in the settings group for the end face behavior and change that to the extend, then what happens is that end face gets extended up and cuts off that edge. And now the edge that I'm actually moving is, is being shorter. So you get some options there. As I go ahead and choose OK or Apply, Apply leaves the window up. Then I could move that edge again and maybe move it a different direction, maybe not Z, maybe I infer something and uh, uh, move that maybe out in the direction of that edge. And then I can drag that, whatever, choose OK and modify, enhance, however you want to say that to shape your part. Okay. Now I'm going to undo one of those again, just a quick right mouse click. You can also do a Control Z if you're into hotkeys. Now I want to uh, get into a little sketching here. And one of the things that uh, you'll have in this package, the Chem Express, is the ability to sketch. And it's really the full functionality of sketching. I mean, you'll have some limitation, a little limitation as to how you can use the sketches that you create. And I'm going to show you that as well. Uh, going into sketches, that's just on a different tab on the ribbon bar up here, sketch and task environment. I want to sketch on the top face of this part. I just pick that face. I get the option to actually control the orientation of my sketch plane as to which way I want to be horizontal. If I don't want x, in this case, to, to run in that direction, but the, the way that Y currently is, then I can go to that step for the sketch orientation and identify a new X direction or a new horizontal direction to rotate that little temporary coordinate system. Once I get happy with that, choose the middle mouse button, say OK. Now I'm sketching on that top face of the block. Now as I create my curves, there's a lot of different curve creation techniques, simple curves, more elaborate curve creation, um, splines, conics, whatever. I'm just going to use a profile tool, which allows me to create both lines and arcs. So I can start up here on the edge of my block, create a line by starting there, just dragging it down. It's going to create a vertical line. Click to create that. Now there's a cute little uh, enhancement that when I want to jump into an arc mode that has tangency, I just hold down mouse button 1 and move my mouse. And I am immediately in an arc mode that's tangent. To the end of that, it could also be perpendicular to the end. I want it to be tangent, though, so I just kind of drive my cursor through that little circle with the x in it and get the curve that I want. Now I'll 
end it over here on that edge. As you can see, it's in string mode, and that makes this profile very efficient because I can just pick once to create another curve rather than twice. If I want to break that, I just hit my middle mouse button once again, and I'm now able to start a new set of curves somewhere else. I'll go up to the top edge once again, start up there, another line about the same length, hold down mouse button one, create another arc, pop it over here on the left, and that's all I want. I'm, I'm done with this. Right, well, before I get out of the sketch, maybe I want to constrain a little bit. Maybe I want to add some dimensions. Very simple to do. Rapid dimension. I can put a dimension between these two lines. Pan by mouse button two and three. Together, that is. And then I can edit that value immediately. Type in two, hit enter. It updates. Maybe put another dimension from the line on the right over to the edge of the block. Add that dimension up here also two inches. So now basically I've got my, uh, my design is kind of centered on that six inch block width. Again, on the angled face, however. So I finish my sketch now. It goes back to the original view and I now have that sketch completed. I'm going to use that sketch now by going back to the Home tab and use the Offset Region function. An Offset Region has a, a number of uh, enhancements that allow you to pick various types of geometries to actually offset and that's controlled with what they call a curve rule here, or a face rule, rather. Uh, you've got the ability to pick uh, groups of faces or single faces. And what I'm going to do here is just choose a region boundary face. And that region boundary face will actually help divide up any face where I have other curve or edge definitions. In other words, just putting my cursor on that top face finds that region that's, that's bounded by the curves that I made in the sketch. So I can pick that boundary, move over to the left to pick that boundary, and now I can drag that downward or I can move it in a direction that I want that's relative to that face once again, that offset face. Uh, that orientation is going to get offset in its normal direction. Now it can go up or it can go down. If I want to go down, I can either type a negative number or again, I can just drag these little handles that are out there and drag it all the way through the part if I want, and as soon as I do that, then it lets me know with a little alert here that multiple faces no longer intersect, edges at a vertex cannot adapt. I got little issues here where it's, it's not able to resolve some things, so I can uh, change how many uh, parameters I'm entering in there, or I can reduce the amount of the distance, and it just lets me know, okay, there's not really a warning, there's not a problem, but it is giving me alert that the actual face that I selected over on the right side, it no longer exists. It's, it's not a part of the model now, and that's not a problem. I'll choose the middle mouse button and say, okay. So now I've got a cutout on the right, and I still got a little material thickness on the left. One of the uh, great things about the package you got here is there's still full associativity that if I highlight this sketch, you'll notice how it can highlight parent and child features that are within here. As I look at the colors, the blue indicates a child feature, and you can notice the block in red there, that's a parent feature. So the sketch is still attached to the block, even though I did some move edges that change the, the angularity of the faces. If I were to edit and delete the move edge to feature, just do a right mouse click and, and pick the black X, then there's no edit problem, no update problem the sketch is still associative to the block. So therefore, it immediately updates. And now I've got more of a, uh, a symmetric type of shape. And the offset region that I created cuts out both sides without issue. Now, I want to edit that sketch. So I'll just double click on it. I could do a right mouse click, and I get edit. But as you see, the bold indicates the double click default. So really, all I have to do is just double click on it. Again, that makes it very efficient. So I'm now back into that sketch as an active sketch. And I want to do the same profile tool here, but I want to create a little bit different geometry. I want to create kind of a slot shape in here. So I'm going to start that right there and drag a line downward. Again, hold down mouse button one to go into arc mode, wrap that all the way around about 180 degrees, and click there to end the arc. It goes right back into line mode immediately. Create the line up as high as the other line. And then hold down mouse button one, wrap an arc all the way around, and close it off right to that endpoint. And I'm done. Right mouse click, finish sketch. Now that doesn't automatically get offset with the first one because of the curve rule that I picked. I picked specific regions that I wanted to offset, and it doesn't just include this new region. However, 
uh, I can go ahead and create a new shape out of that. Uh, but instead of using the uh, offset region, I'll use a little bit different command. I'll go into the More Gallery and use a Pull Face command. And this one allows me to select individual faces. Now, it also has a curve rule, a little bit uh, shorter list, though, uh, single face or region boundary face. And as I pick just that, that area inside of that slot shape that I built, I can now drag that or move it a certain distance. And as I would move it a particular distance, then I would get that little handle thing again. Or if I do that other option there, a point to point, then I pick starting point and ending point, or the reference point and the destination point, however you want to think about that. So let's just say I start off here at the top, end at the bottom. That's pretty much all I wanted to do was create a through slot. Mouse button 2, and there is our pull face feature. Again, there's uh, associativity of the pull face, the sketch, and the block. Now, first offset region that I created there. I want to edit that depth. In a half inches, I'll just type in a new number, 0.5. Hit the middle mouse button and get rid of the there. And it lets me know the pull face had a little uh, Situation, a face does not intersect properly with its edges and cannot adapt. OK, close that information window and take a look. All right, so now I've got an, an issue there with the pull face. So I could edit that. If I double click and edit that, then because the points that I had selected before up here, there is no point down at the bottom where I used to have it. So now I can just identify new points. First point. I don't, I don't really see any, any other point that is below where I want for that full thickness. Not a problem. I can just say I want a distance. And now as I identify what distance value I want, then I need to tell it what direction. So I can pick one of these orientations there. And as I drag that downward, however far I want to drag that, then that should. Ah, OK. Need to select just that face. Now, the, the other face has got selected, and I can edit whatever I might need to there. You can go back in and change what's been selected. So you can see that face got selected. And then the distance, I've got some associativity going on here. So changing the methods that you use aren't necessarily going to uh, uh, get dropped out, so to speak. You don't have to redo things. There, if, you, if you design something a certain way, it captures that design intent and will keep it the same way. Now, that's not the design that I want. If I don't want that pull face to give me this resulting shape, which is not like my original shape, then all i got to do is I can delete that completely if I want to, and then get back and do another pull face. And this is something that you rarely need to do. It's just a matter of exactly what kind of design changes you need to make. So if I choose that, instead of point to point, I go to distance, and then I drag it down. No matter how far I might want to drag it down, 3.7, whatever, choose OK. It goes through, and that's fine. So depending on what kind of changes you might have to your parts uh, and or assemblies, um, there will be uh, associativities that you have designed into it or not. If you don't want the associativity, you don't have to get that.